Hey guys, Key here from Kegland and talking to you today about our new G20 glycol chiller. Up until now, we've had our G40 glycol chiller. So if you guys wanted to, you know, cool down, let's say a glycol chilled fermenter, up to one or two or three or four of them for that matter, or if you wanted to buy one of our temp twisters and put that in, uh, you know, a kegmenter or something like that, or a firmzilla, uh, to chill those glycol chilled fermenters, the only option we really had was that G40 glycol chiller. And the G40, as much as it did the job, and it was uh, fairly large and cumbersome, it was really built and originally designed to be a commercial glycol chiller. So that's why we had such a large tank in there, and it had a fairly large format. Originally, when we made the G40 uh, glycol chillers, they were intended to be an undercounter chiller for, uh, you know, Temprite system, so people who wanted to have a keg sitting under the bar, runs through the stainless steel lines in the G40, comes out the other side, and then goes to a draft uh, tap system. That's originally what it was designed for, which is why it had you know, a fairly large uh, uh, glycol or ice bank tank. This particular unit, we really wanted to design something which was specifically suited to you domestic guys at home or small microbreweries who are chilling fermenters, and you didn't really need a massive glycol chiller or a massive tank. Um, this thing is almost as powerful as the G40. It actually has the same uh, compressor as the G40, but because it's smaller radiator and smaller, more compact size, it doesn't have quite as much cooling capacity, but it's still ample power to chill down even a fairly large 200 liter, 250 liter uh, conical fermenter that we sell, or you could use it to chill multiple small fermenters, for instance. This particular unit has two temp controllers on it. It's got one temp controller on the back here, this particular temp controller is to set the temp of the actual glycol tank, so it's not to set the temperature of your actual fermentation temperature or your fermentation tank. Then on the front of the unit, you can see we've got two temp controllers here, and each one of these temp controls can be set to different temperature controlled um, tanks for that matter. So you've got a different probe, so each probe goes to each different fermenter. We can have actually up to four of these installed into, onto this unit. So if you want to buy an expansion unit, we've got other pumps and uh, temp control units which you can plug into this. And in the future, we might even have some other G20 units which come out of the box ready to do uh, you know, up to four fermenters as well. This particular unit, we've decided to go with compressor. I know when we originally started looking at the design for this G20 unit, we tried to get away with using thermoelectric cooling, but honestly, I'm glad we didn't. Thermoelectric cooling just didn't quite have the cooling performance. And I know there's some, there are some other homebrew thermoelectric coolers which you know, kind of keep you in fermentation range, but as soon as you want to crash chill a reasonable volume of beer, they just don't have the power, especially when that ambient temperature gets hot. In a place like Australia, we need serious cooling performance. So if you want a chiller which absolutely will kick ass even in the hot days throughout summer and chill down multiple different fermenters and doesn't take up too much space, this G20 unit is an excellent choice. So you might be wondering how does it actually work and what are these hoses for? Well, for this little display unit, we've just got a loop here. So the glycol is just coming straight out and back into itself. If you've got a fermenter, obviously this would come out of here, go through your fermenter and then enter back into the chiller. So what you would have is this tube here, for instance, going to your fermenter and you can see this in action. If I just hit this here, for instance, I can set the temperature I've got it set on 26, but I'll just decrease that temperature to a lot lower. And you can see the pump will kick on. There you go. As you can see, the pump that we've got in, in this unit is quite powerful, so I'm getting a really nice strong flow here. Even if it was going through fairly small tubing, you can see the pressure is really, you know, pretty good. So much higher than a lot of the other glycol chillers that are out there. So the head and the flow on this pump is enough to do pretty much you know, any, any fermenter, or even right up to a few hundred liters in size. Thanks for that guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna keep up to date with any of the cool new stuff we're bringing out, in the bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe, and you'll be notified when any of our new videos or new product releases come out. The other thing you can do is join the Facebook community group. We've got a Kegland Facebook community group which is full of members just like yourself sharing tips and tricks on how to brew and how to get the most out of our gear. Anyway, hope to see you next time, fellas. See ya.